Fact, we have influence, 42%. Wow. We almost got it up to 50. Good I job, respect Kat. that. We well. got the match ready. <laughs> we are powerful, powerful people. Let's see if chat's newfound belief space man in Furia is able to do anything here, or if the power of Daniel's carry is going to be a little bit too much. And of course, space station gaming are much more than a Daniel carry. Uh, it's going to have to be more than just chat's belief. You're also going to have to look at, I think, for both sides, the belief and not only the complexity, no pun intended, of Furia, but also the, the the dimensions that you have for SSG because it can't just be the Daniel show. You need to have more consistency from Arsenal, from LJ specifically. This is a, a player they brought in to make a significant change. He has in some aspects, but SSG not really living up to their potential, their hype as of late, and the same could be said for Furia. Yeah, I mean, Rexels, who LJ replaced, is a unique player. You know, he's capable of making decisions that not many other players would, whereas LJ, I think, is a, is a slightly more standard player, as Daniel does make a good save and put it to the side. But LJ has recently got to one v, uh, sorry, number one in the 2v2 leaderboard, so congratulations to him. And he will be wanting to make a big statement for himself. So desperate to qualify <laughs> for the next major with Space Station Gaming. He's, you know, he's looked really good at times, but it is difficult when you're joining a team with Daniel in it. It is, and then you're kind of wondering maybe the, the two's gameplay will translate relatively easily over towards his threes, which again, we've seen for a while since he was back on Oxygen, if memory serves correct, that he has always been one of the more competent players on the field, whether it's been physical or whether it's his closing finishes on the goal line. He's very good at utilizing the most of his possessions, especially playing upfield, but it also means you have to be more than willing to give the ball away to someone like Daniel if you want to orchestrate the offense through him. If that is the case, SSG have more than enough in the toolbox to go into this series, but for Furia, what are the kind of keys to victory for them looking at how this roster has played for the majority of this regional let alone the split so far it seems that they just yet have yet to maybe put the pieces together and those small mistakes have costed them in the series absolutely it's balance yeah so i mean lost joins the team and we know he's one of if not the fastest player in the world but sometimes as you see there as he and yan tangle over each other's feet that can be an issue you have to expect him to do the unexpected if you get him on your team i think that fury are still part of them that expect him to play a slightly more regular play style like they had with Kyo for so many years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Lost is just not going to do that. If that's what you want, that's a poor pickup. And I don't think that Lost is a poor pickup. Uh, but we were talking about a carry. I mean, I was saying that Daniel is a carry, but we have to think on the other team, Jan. You know, a few months ago, he was in the conversation for the best player in the world. He is yeah. more than capable of putting Fury on his back. Yeah, more than more than uh, most people had started to assume that he was going to maintain that number one spot and kind of keep his reign going through the season. But again, Rocket League changes. It, it's a fickle esport. A lot of things do change in the off seasons, but also how kind of the composition of squads will either benefit or negate some play styles. And we've seen that specifically with Furia, but it really comes down to, I think, a lot of their midfield pressure, something they've struggled with this season so far. When we've seen them get comfortable on their sidewall presence, their counterattacks downfield, it's been because Jan's had space to move and Lost has looked very comfortable with finding those infield passes. If that is the case, Fury should have themselves a pretty standard start to this series. But in this game one alone, oof, it's really been a couple of interesting starts where we've we've traded possessions back and forth, and Daniel doing it everything he can downfield to get SSG on the board. Well, that is not a carrier's goal. That is just uh, making the most of a situation that Daniel didn't really expect. There was a whiff from Fury on the goal line, and the well-timed demo came in front, Daniel. He just prodded the ball home. So that's one little Space Station gaming. And I've got to say, even up to that goal, they have looked more likely of breaking the deadlock. Yeah, those are some of those small inconsistencies defensively that I think Fury are going to have to work on for this series to essentially go the distance. But for SSG, like we've talked about, where once they get possession, maybe they let Daniel do what he wants, picks up a demo, clears lane, open house, and he finds the goal. That's kind of what you want. The catalyst getting going early for SSG, very hot start. Already about a minute 40 still left to play in this one. Time's dwindled away, and it's really just felt like all of SSG. Fury trying to get back into this one, but there have been one or two too many missed touches. A little bit awkward and stagnant from them so far. Looking like they're lacking a, teeth, uh, looking a bit of teeth in attack. That's better from Yam with the flip reset. And you put, uh, Arsenal puts it out wide, and then cards coming in and then trying to chase down Daniel. It's not quite happening, but I do like to see already Furia going for a bump or a demo because Space Station Gaming so far are looking way too comfortable, and suddenly there's barely over a minute left. It's the prioritization from Furia that's kind of helped them maintain that midfield spot, but so far they've kept three up at a time, haven't really been able to convert it downfield. And you're wondering whether or not that means uh, SSG are going to be more than happy just to play boom ball here. Because if you catch them like this, it's going to be easier to pop it over the backline defender when nobody's rotating for space. That's exactly what Space Station do. It's the man we want to see more from LJ. Just bends his car one way, then bends it back the other. 
gets to the over the top of Lost, who actually was living like his namesake, seemed a little bit unsure what LJ was trying there as he came from the side wall. And it's Space Station Gaming pretty much in third gear, double their lead. Could be three here. Arsenal doesn't get the best shot of his career, and it remains 2 0. That is the danger call when you have all three up. As soon as, as one person wins a 50 or someone from SSG just gets it right over that backline defender, there's nobody else around to kind of close the, the deal and, and get back to net. That's the problem the Fury have had. They just have not been able to convert their stints upfield into positive drives or momentum with the ball. And SSG are poking it free. We saw it with LJ. We saw it with Daniel earlier with a demo that created that opening goal. With under 30 to play, this is going to be a game one win, barring a miracle, really, that's uh, a complete flip offensively from Furia. We're still waiting for them to kind of get going. Yeah, it's not likely at all on this. Yang can take out Daniel, but even if he does, lost. He was a little bit reluctant, which is pretty much what we were saying at the start of this. He would never be. Surely now, even Lost is not a player who's starting to question himself. Another double commit. Not even involving Lost this time from Yan and Card. Furia, all at sea. Space Station Gaming have done enough, but I think to an extent in game number one, uh, Spaceman, Fury have beaten themselves. Yeah, SSG didn't have to work overtime for any of their goals. I mean, that was a very, very quick start to this best of five. They took what they were given, but on the other side, Furia just didn't seem like they were able to find their rhythm at all, whether it's a consistency problem or just a game one extension for them. They very much struggled to find their footing early in series. We've seen them even jump to a lead and then lose it in a reverse sweep fashion. So I'm curious what the approaches will be like, what the changes will be going into game two, because Leaf, uh, it's a lot of times, Fury have what it takes, but they don't seem to put it all together. Yeah. And uh, it, it just kind of comes up a little bit too late for them. Yeah, I mean, you can see that in the Mobile One High Performance Replay. Space Station looking strong in this matchup. But uh, I want to give you some uh, some idea of who's looking strong in the other matchups real quick. Mm. Um, here's a fun one. We talked about Ghost Gaming beforehand, uh, how they're still potential. And it's wide open. They're potentially in the running, too. They just took down G2 in game one. So I, they're up. I, I apologize for saying no easy games in that group, apart from Ghost. So yeah, I'm already proven to. You're already proven. It's already. Didn't take long. Well, I mean, that's what a, a group a death is, is that kind of anyone can can take it, right? So sure. And now you're right. Obviously, Gen G got their job as well. Yep. Um, I want to let you know, M80 is a team. I think everyone's got their on right now. Uh, they took game one against Knights and they're up yeah. two one in game two. So still looking strong coming into the, even this regional, so consistency. Spaceman, what would you rate cool. Furious' performance in that first game by their standards out of 10? Are we doing numerically or alphabetically? Uh, number, really. I will give it a C4 out of a 10 on a scale. I think you said they didn't play as well as they normally can, in which case no. I would agree, Spaceman. That was Thank you. not up to Furia's normal standards, and I'm sure we will see them playing much better as this series commences. There was a car change from Yan. He couldn't wait to leave the lobby in the last one, so clearly they're aware that something's not quite working. And I've got to say on Forbidden Temple, they've at least started with a little bit of territory and pressure. You know, I, I also think that kind of looking how that game one went just rhythm-wise, it was a very quick 2-0 victory. Like, we didn't waste a lot of time with long counterattacks from Furia. There wasn't a lot of hold on possessions for SSG. They got upfield, they scored, and they went back to defense, and Fury was still trying to figure out how they were going to play their cards in that opening start. That spells a lot for maybe the mentality of SSG going into today, but also the the, the problems with Fury and what they need to change, because they, they really didn't have a good hold on what they wanted to do in game one. But granted, it's the best of five. You still have plenty of time to turn things around very quickly. Arsenal is 1v3-ing, and uh, there's still space here for SSG. Yeah, to be fair to Fury, though, they managed to deal with that, at least for now. Daniel is coming in, though, gets it past Yan, wants the second touch, can't get it, card misses. And then gets round with the in and out save and sends it away. More awkwardness from Fury, despite, despite starting this second game better. Being awkward as soon as they're in defense. And I think that's what Space Station Gaming have realized. They can just hold out when Fury do come forward. They will get free goals, but now as Fury are attacking Arsenal saves, Yan surely puts it in to get Fury's first goal of the game. And there it is. And this is great pressure too. I mean, Lost is able to get two defenders to bite on that mid push and Jan comes in for the closing finish. But really, I was wondering how SSG are gonna handle the pressure. They had all the boost in the world to work with, but that's where you put the pedal to the metal if you're Fury. You force SSG to make those saves and to dive across the net. They do so. Finally, you follow up and you find the goal you've been looking for in game one. That's a nice response from Fury. Still not prime Fury, but Space Station Gaming gonna have to do a little bit of thinking if this series is gonna go their way. So they just sends it forward towards Lost. He finds Yan, a transition game for Fury, and much better than it was in game number one. What can Yan conjure up? Nothing with Arsenal closing him down. Uh, LJ's there to the side. Should be able to send this one up for Daniel. Mm. That's what Space Station want. Daniel with the ball gets a flip reset from the ceiling. Tries to go undercard. 
Doesn't quite happen that time and lost into that wide. And that's a beautiful play from Daniel as well. He gets that midfield grab and Arsenal's more than happy to give the pass away. Then you let him continue to play off ball. You let him get those demos, that physicality that keeps SSG upfield. That's what you want to see if you're an SSG fan. They're feeling very comfortable as a three-man unit, but Fury have responded quite nicely. They've gotten back to the midfield line. They're holding onto the boost, just as I say that, lost for the diving clear to the corner. They look more comfortable now taking some of those challenges against the SSG offense. PlayStation game and they're coming forward again. LJ, look at him winning that race. He's coming alive in this game and in this series. And around the top of card. I mean, Daniel, everything's going through him, but LJ's really impressed me so far in the first couple of games. Yeah, it looks like he's been more maybe of the cattle to the offense than Daniel has. But as I say that, there you go. So a tie game very quickly. And that's the SSG offense that you're kind of accustomed to as Arsenal gets two to bite and LJ centers it nicely for Daniel. I don't want to keep on critiquing Fury, but once again, I mean, when that pass came in from LJ, there were two of them staring at the ball, pretty much wrong wheels, had to reverse quickly, and their defense lost all momentum completely. So more yeah. questions for Fury's defense, although it was nice play from Space Station. Yeah, I mean, you can only really credit Arsenal for setting it all up, but you do wonder where exactly were the defenders going, right? You're thinking maybe you pinch it towards the wall, bring it through the corner. You shouldn't oh. have two that are that freely exposed, and you shouldn't have an open goal like this where Daniel has two members in front and he still finds a way to slot it. Yeah, but LJ causing more chaos there, getting it past card. Lost misses again, and Daniel had to do a lot of work. The finish wasn't easy from there. I think it was the one part of the goal he could get it, but it just looked a little bit simple overall for Space Station. Fury is still struggling in defense. It does come back to that conversation we had in the start of game one, Cole, where, you know, Fury do all the work to get themselves on the board, but it's these small mistakes that kind of pull them back. You know, one step forward, three steps back. That has been the tall tale for this squad in this entire split. Maybe it does change. Arsenal, great save. But for Furia, you have to start mitigating those mistakes defensively because defense keeps you in the games, but offense helps you win them. And so far, they really haven't had either. Loss is coming in. Cards to his left. And Jan was to his right. And then it was just down the side. Jan, again, up against LJ. LJ, who's done so much good work this series. Almost gets it towards Arsenal. But Arsenal have tied like a daisical. That lets Lost in. And Furia, I think, really needed that with one minute 20 left. Absolutely did. And that's all set up by Jan's 50 win. Card the follow-up as well. The pressure's mounting and Lost. This flies in single file. The net's pretty open on opposite post. I like that shot. Good creation throughout the corners. Nicely played by Card. Better finished by Lost. And Furia take another step forward. Yeah, it's one of the few times in this series so far that Furia have all been in sync. You know, the three of them seem to have a sense of what the other was doing. We haven't seen that anywhere near enough. Hopefully for them, they can build upon it. As Yang goes to the sky, but Daniel comes in. And Lost has to make another save, diving in from the side. Card gets out of his way wisely, so Lost can keep on going. That's actually great work from Lost. Not been his best series so far, but he's definitely stepped up in the last 30 seconds. So LJ goes around the corner. Arsenal's going to try and just stare down Yan, make his next play as difficult as possible. Yan then returns the favor to Space Station Gaming. That was almost going in the top corner, and Arsenal tees up LJ. Yeah, they're letting Yan roam as an enforcer, and I like that call. You're kind of paralleling what Daniel's done so far for the SSG offense. And if you want to play through the crease, that's how you do it. That's how you get physical and keep SSG off the backboard that opens up a shot for Cart, opens up space for a loss, and now you can triple commit and afford those luxuries defensively that you didn't have before because you're feeling comfortable on the opposite side of the ball. But we'll see how the clear does come out, as it looks like for the moment, Furia can breathe, but not for long. SSG are pressing. Yeah, space Station game will be well aware. Their opponents have stepped up, but they're still trying to attack all the way down the end of game number two. The infield pass doesn't quite come off. But SSG's still looking confident. Arsenal's bumped into the play almost. Card sends it wide. Fury, I think, would take an overtime at this point, just to give themselves something approaching a 50-50 chance of taking a game. Daniels low beaten. Yan is there up against nobody. LJ up in Arsenal. Oh, Card's coming in. Does he want to keep this one alive? He wants to. Can't quite do it. And we go to overtime in game two. Much like SSG are forcing the defensive saves from Fury, Fury are now starting to force the hand of SSG's defense. And look what it's caused. It's it's forced SSG to respect the offense of Fury more, but also they're having to fly into the corner grabs and make sure that ball doesn't land. Arsenal with a beautiful redirect. Daniel plays it off the backboard, but the clear will be there and Lost kicks it out. A chance now for Fury offensively. It's risky defending for a second, but it just about works out for Fury. Arsenal do manage to have some control of the ball, though. LJ's going to be beaten here, though, by Lost. His speed has really started to help Furia, and it's going to really help them now as he takes the overtime. Now, that's just a beautiful play. I mean, Lost slows it enough, gets it around two, gets it around three. Goodbye on skates. Nice knowing you. We'll see you next game. That is what you want from Furia. That individuality, that creativity that was missing for so long. It finally comes out, and it's a 1v3 for the win.
Yeah, and it's one of the few times that Lost actually has space among his teammates as well. And that's why he has been so impressive in his past and he can be so impressive for Fury once he has those little pockets of space to play with. With Carlin Yan just giving him a little bit of, uh, you know, some area to do what he does. And Leaf, that was much better for Fury. This series is starting to brew into something quite nice. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, I like to see close matchups. To be, you know, I don't, I don't care what the team, who I'm cheering for, what the teams are. If it's not a close matchup, it's not, it's not, it's not fun. You, you want it to be good, and we have a few close matchups going across the board. Uh, I gotta let you know the the optic phase matchup is pretty fun. Optic's actually up one zero against really? phase. Yeah, and they're tied two two in the game too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I told, I'm, I'm telling. Mm, okay, that's it. V one NRG. Best beliefs. Yeah, that's one yeah. one in the series. Oof. So again, remember these team streams are going on. Go go watch these streams if you want to support these teams and, and uh, mm -hmm. cheer them on. M80 looks like they're about to complete a sweep against the Knights, though. So They keep going, maybe. don't they? <laughs> they're not stopping. Three regionals in a row. They are performing. I love it. Wow. M80 looking good. Don't forget, everybody, that you are able to go and watch any of those series. Well, you can stay right here and see a Fury complete their turnaround against Space Station Gaming, who I think Spaceman were just a little bit shell-shocked with the way Fury has stepped up at the end of that game. Yeah, there wasn't that timid offense that we saw in game one that Fury, wow, okay, that, that Fury <laughs> clearly ball. did, they clearly had, that kind of broke my brain for a second, but SSG started to respect the midfield pressure that Fury were giving more, and I think that's where we're seeing the series really come back to even weight across both sides. The equilibrium is clearly here, now we're tied 1-1, this is a very decisive game three in this best of five. Lost has an outlet in the center, which is card, but isn't quite able to find in the past. Was too far along, so Arsenal was able to take over. And Space Station Gaming looking to return to form here in game number three. They're looking uh, faster than their opponents again, but Fury are getting these little pockets of space to play with. The redirect is good. Daniel's aware to it. And then look at Lost tracking. Look at the space that he gets for card. It's another shot on target. And Space Station Gaming are dealing with so much more pressure than they were in the certainly the start of the first game. And I think that's a great oh. term there. They're tracking the ball more specifically off those follow-up shots, those rebounds. You're seeing Yan throw a shot towards the net. You're seeing Lost start to rip one as well. These one-timers that weren't working out for Furia in games one and two, but near the end of game two, it started to come to fruition. Now they're looking very comfortable with just, you know what, we're at midfield. Let's put something at the net. Let's take a shot. Let's get creative. And that's been a big change from the start of this series. Furia starting to look much more comfortable in their own skin. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. They're looking like a team again, and it was just starting to look like that wasn't going to be the case. The Space Station Gaming going to have to do a lot more work in order to break them down. Surely have to play the counter-attacking style, because they will sense there are still mistakes in this Fury defense. Maybe Arsenal can force one up against Yan. Sends it towards Card, but Card said no. LJ had tracked back, and he's slowed down as well in the last game or so. So this is where, you know, if he is to achieve what he wants to do in this team, LJ, he has to be able yep. to step back up and not just accept that his bubble, of, you know, is, is cooled down. And we spent a lot of time talking about the positives and the changes from game one and on for Fury, but it's also worth noting, this is a big regional for SSG as well. A lot of these teams fighting for that next qualification spot for the major, SSG being one of them. And if you're watching their gameplay to start, if you're a fan of this squad, you're going to be happy with what you're seeing. Arsenal looks very comfortable moving the ball upfield, setting up Daniel, setting up LJ. LJ is being a catalyst when it comes to the physicality, playing through the corners, winning those 50s, and Daniel has flown through the lanes, whether it's a third man or the second option on offense, and he has really put some quality shots on that today. SSG looked very comfortable offensively. We've used that word a lot, but this is what you want in the third regional with the nerves on the line and the stakes that are on the line. SSG should be feeling good. Arsenal is going to leave this one to his teammate LJ and actually goes all the way towards Daniel. I'm doing all sorts of work. Look at the dribbling prowess of Yan. Not stuff there against Card, but Daniel's going to come in now. Space Station, I think, need a bit of time on the ball for a little while because Fury do seem to be able to dictate the play much more than they'd like. You know, counter-attacks are all well and good, but you still want to change the conversation that Daniel's trying to do by sticking to that wall. It's not quite worked there. Andre just tries to prod it towards Daniel, but it's an awkward angle, so he can't. Well, he can. Nobody else would be able to do too much there, but Daniel at least gets it past one and then forces the 50-50 towards LJ. I mean, that's just brilliant pressure from Furia. Daniel had a full tank, and he wasn't able to escape through the corner, and now look what's happening. These demos are creating space. Ooh. They're going to have to start committing on the goal line, and SG are kind of throwing their numbers at this, just trying to hold possession, like you said. It hasn't been theirs for the majority of this game. It's been all of Furia, though it's 0-0. It very much feels like Furia are in complete control, and they have all the boost in the world to work with to clear this ball away and can keep the offense going. What you worry, though, is that when a team is as delicate as Furia, if they have this position and don't make the most of it, they might live to regret it. But that hasn't happened. They do have their lead, and it's lost with the goal. 
And again, these 50s in the closing seconds of the, of the offensive third for Furia, that set up so many open nets. Back in game two, it was those constant 50s through the corner from Yan and from Loss that set up a shot. Even here, looking at the transition downfield, it's the 50 win for Furia that gives them a chance to take an open net look. And they find it, they finish it, they have a 1-0 lead. Still plenty of time on the clock for SSG, but Furia looking like a very strong squad and, and kind of riding their wrongs, those small mistakes they had. So plenty of time for SSG, but we haven't seen too much from them in game three. They'll have to completely step up and increase that pace. Daniel's not able to do there then. Card into the center. Lost is just waiting. Perfect rotations from Furia. Let's get the second touch. Not quite able to. Arsenal takes a couple of hits for himself. Card mm. themes in from the side. But it's just fallen to Yan again. Space Station Gaming, they just can't keep control of this ball. There was a hesitation from LJ on the wing. He was waiting for Arsenal to move up with the ball, and then he got his call to follow up suit. And the ball didn't go anywhere. There was an immediate demo, a big bump, and Fury are now just playing 2v1 zone defense, which is very easy to read for them. I'm wondering whether it's a communication problem for SSG, but it looks like oftentimes they're waiting for the offense to come to them rather than kind of forcing their hand and making Furia commit to the play. Daniel, try to keep this one moving, can't get it to Arsenal, but LJ is there for the recovery. Rebound here, SSG clear on the board. Nicely played by Arsenal, but nobody else is around. Daniel has to rotate back. I see 10 more seconds. Space Station Gaming, what have you got? LJ towards Arsenal, but Card is up there. Every race right now being won by Furia. Daniel wants the 50-50, but it just goes to the side. They need more than that. They need something down the center, something near that goal. Is the ball going to fall for an SSG player? I don't think it's going to happen. Card should be able to kill this one. He does kill it, and Furia take the series lead. I think that's indicative of Furia's resolve and their ability to limit their mistakes. They look, again, much more comfortable. We will get on that point a million times because that's been the problem with this team. They have not looked like they've been on the same page in the majority of this split. So far, their offenses look potent. It's looked consistent. Their counterattacks are pretty clean, but granted, Space Station hasn't, hasn't given them much. Regardless, though, when you're looking across the board, it's really been the 50 game. It's been the physicality in our Mobile One High Performance Replay. It was the constant pressure upfield from Furia and the ability to maintain possession lead. Yeah, again, uh, I think we, we made it clear before uh, the, while we went SSG, we're happy to see Furia uh, get, <laughs> looking good on the field or get, at least getting some a couple dubs out there. Uh, speaking of dubs, M80 and Complexity both finished their 3-0 sweeps against their opponents. Uh, Axel was taken down by Complexity. That's who they faced off against. NRG version 1 game is looking fun. Uh, NRG is currently at match point 2-1 against okay. version 1. Uh, cool. So if you're an NRG fan, you, you like it. If you're a V1 fan, Maybe not so much, but it is close still. And Dignitas is currently at match point against Koi uh, into game three, but they are tied, so potentially overtime there. But maybe it will sweep for them too. Wow. Okay, well, version one losing to NRG. It really has not been their split version one. And so no. far, uh, Spaceman, it's not really been furious, but this game and this series is looking more and more like the Fury Revolt, especially with LJ Ooh. missing. Card says yes to the freebie, 1-0. Didn't have to do any work for that. It's like when uh, when chickens look up in the rain and they drown. You just you look up once and you're like, oh, guess what? Waterfall. Boom. There you go. Card uh, takes advantage. You ever seen that? No, I, I've certainly not seen it. Have you it's seen one of chickens or turkeys. Yeah, I saw it when I was a kid. It was traumatizing, but uh, you know, a lot of farms here in the United States. You get to see some stuff. Wow. Well, we've all learned today, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go and. Uh... Anyway, yeah. Uh, so one nil. You were saying to Furia, and what a lovely free goal that was for them. I also heard the leaf giggle in the background as well when you said that. So that's <laughs> I'm, I'm that's trying to count as one. This right now. <laughs> it's true. They look up in the rain and they drown, so uh, they have to keep them inside. Somehow that relates to LJ missing the touch. So you know, that really has thrown me, and I love it so much. Space Station Gaming, let's hope they're not listening to your commentary because right now they'll be saying in the comms, like, really? Can that possibly be a thing? And maybe that was what has been happening for the last game or so because Fury have been all over them. As Sos goes again from the backboard, Daniel. Wow, what positioning from him defensively. Space Station Gaming just needs to do more than make these saves. You know, so now becomes the dichotomy of what was different, could say, from Lost in game one where Fury were causing mistakes and not capitalizing on the other. On the, on the other end. And now for Furia, they're taking advantage of very minor mistakes from SSG and they're scoring off of it. So as a baseline, you're working with a 0-0, but now you have a lead as well. This is uh, going to spell disaster if SSG don't start maintaining possession and really forcing Furia to respect them at midfield, because so far that hasn't happened. Yeah, all those drowning chickens may come home to roost. Let's just set that game up quick. Daniel, let's get this one around the corner, and he does, and there's no one there again. Space Station, they seem so in sync with each other in the first game and a half. All of a sudden, that's completely changed. Let's credit to Furia. 
They have to keep on going. Lost has the ball. He just sends it long. Wants to ask more questions from SSG. Daniel gets a perfect first touch. Wants a fit reset round the corner. Half gets it. And just slaps him out of the way. And Space Station Gaming can come forward no more. I think it's important to note as well that SSG have done a very good job in this game of maintaining their boost upfield. They've always had something in the tank to work with. They haven't had possession. And Cole, you hit on it back in game three. They've struggled to hold on to this ball and really create their offense past that 50 yard line. It seems that again, they're kind of pulling it laterally, trying to force Furia towards the sidewall, maybe a chance for Daniel to get creative with the mechanics, but it hasn't really led to much. And on those inner lanes, you got Furia cutting down these extensions. It's going to be tough for SSG to change it up if they can't find one another. Oh, Cardi fakes it out. And Daniel again is the savior in defense. Lost around the corner. He's got the boost to play with. Daniel again has to nip in there from nowhere and get the block. I think that one was going in. Another great effort from Furia. I think they're happy now to play the more counter-attacking play style. Let SSG keep coming forward. Let them just Ooh. pucker themselves out and then send them right back. Arsenal is going to lose this race to Card, isn't he? Yeah, Card wins it cleanly. Daniel's nipping in. LJ does have half a chance to get a couple of touches. But right now, Space Station are being made completely ineffectual against the defensive Furia. You're going to have to start hunting down Yen as well. He is now roaming, looking for demos, looking for bombs, clearing the goal line for Furia once they get upfield. We've seen a little bit of that on the opposite side where Arsenal's fallen off the play, been a second man trying to create space for LJ to score, for Daniel to get a shot. But that's about it. It's really just been the physicality and the constant pressure from Furia. Back towards the side wall we go. LJ was looking for his teammate, but Yan takes it right back, and Daniel has to fall off towards the top of the goal line and burn all his boost to keep this one out. I mean, it's just this constant, like, lazy Susan pressure that you're seeing from Furia that's just devastating for the SSG defense. Let's see if Daniel, he has the most likely to change that. He always seems to be for Space Station, but it's just not quite happening. That final touch, that, you know, left or right 50-50 isn't going their way, and LJ can't connect either. Daniel puts it to the side Arsenal. He's coming in now. Mm. And there's nowhere to be seen rotating back for boost. He has to go up in the sky. But it's such a slow touch. LJ can get it. He can't really do too much of it, even getting past the defender. Loss is there just waiting. Space Station just lapped that incision now. And there's only a minute left. Fury could double their lead. Lost. Had a real chance there to put that one on target. Daniel from the side. Arsenal beats his opponent. Arsenal should equalize here. And just like that, Furious playstyle has backfired. There was too much space for about seven minutes in this entire stretch where there was opportunities here for SSG to just throw the ball downfield and get a look. And finally they do. It took Arsenal escaping what would have been a demo and Daniel as a lead blocker up front. But for those long stretches, SSG had so much space to create a play. They just could never get through that last barricade of the defense of Furia. Finally, they find an opening, and Arsenal, like he's done all series, has played upfield and found success. SSG will know that Furia are now a team that are not above a collapse. They just have to keep on going. They've got their equalizer. Now, if they keep their heads up, they make another one. It's going to happen, is it? No, Jan just about gets a wonder save. It was his own mistake that he made the most of dealing with. Now, Card chasing this ball, 30 seconds left. There's definitely one more goal in this before overtime. Could belong to either team. SSG really fancy it now, but that one's going to be saved by Card. It's a tough clear though. I mean, you give it right back to Arsenal and now you gotta worry about a demo down front. Arsenal flies off the backboard and gets close enough to creating havoc, but you slow it down to the midfield. Do SSG have enough just to keep this one up for another swing? I think they do. Lovely fake, Daniel. He wins it with seven seconds left. There was a fake in the air, but it's the Daniel show, really. He doesn't win that without getting that midfield boost. He does not finish this play without stealing that grab and taking resources away from Furia. We're almost guaranteed a champion's field between these two teams, but it comes down to this final kickoff. Oh, it's a good one for SSG as well. Arsenal can just flick it over the top. And Furia, it has to be said, have collapsed. It's good work from SSG, but 3-1 from the position they were in, that is painful for Furia. It really is, but I think that's also just credit to Daniel, of course. He is able to pick up 100 boosts. He solos his way through, but Arsenal, who kind of sets up the entire offense in this game, just keeping pressure downfield, keeping his rotations clean, and putting more opportunities on the board for SSG to finally find a goal. This was a brilliant resurgence in the late game by SSG. They kept to their cards, they stuck to what worked, they found space, Furia eventually do crumble, but they don't get anywhere without Arsenal kind of leading the charge, and you just give Daniel space with boost, yeah, he's probably gonna score. That just means we're getting a champion's field. Mm, yeah, well, we're, we're heading there, Leaf. And before this series started, you asked Twitch chat for some analysis about why Space Station will beat Furia. What was yeah. it they said? 
Yeah, uh, uh, they said Daniel will carry. Hmm. Hmm. They were spitting. Are they are they geniuses? They need me. Are we losing our jobs? (laughs) (laughs) Chat me, man. We got all of you up here on the desk. Uh, This isn't the only match that's close right now. Version one NRG in uh, in game five now. NRG lost the overtime where they were on match point, and now both teams are on match point. It's essentially Mm -hmm. a best of one. Version one is up. 1-0, 1-0, though, in that match. So go tune into that. Very exciting. I do also want to let you know, Phase Optic. Right now, Optic Gaming is at match point 2-1 over Phase. And the last <laughs> game that they just played, uh-huh. Optic won 5-1. to one. Oh, yeah. I told uh-huh. you. I made a tweet. I said Optic's coming this week. Oh, oh, let me cook. Let chat cook. Everybody's cooking, <laughs> okay? It's happening. Ooh. Phenomenal. And uh, of course, G2 did finish their match over Ghost Gaming 3-1. to one. And the only other one that's still going on past that is Dignitas and Koi, uh, which is still 2-1 for Dignitas. Mm. This long and winding series has gone all the way to Champions Field. And truly, I've got no idea who is on top here. Furia looked dominant for a couple of games, but Space Station Gaming have come roaring back and they are punishing Furia. And the last thing you want is Daniel to be the main one getting going for SSG. When you're getting on Champions Field, everybody commits, but no one's tall enough. And Daniel opens up proceedings very quickly, 12 seconds into game five. We already got a lead for Space Station. After a collapse like that at the end of game four, the last thing you want to do is concede in 12 seconds. It could get even worse. Arsenal from the ceiling. And we're just about able to dip in there ahead of him. That has Yan in the center, but Arsenal takes him out. You have to remember, this is what SSG can do as well. The way they can frustrate you. The mm-hmm. demos, the bumps, the awkward plays. And then, of course, Spaceman, the Daniel Brilliance. Yeah, look, once the demos start to land for SSG, that's when you're in panic mode if you're Furia. But you try to keep things cool, calm, collected for now. Get back to midfield, try to reestablish a baseline with that offense. That's all credit to SSG, though. That double commit, a little bit interesting. Daniel does get the save. Yang going to pop it back up. A slow roller, easily read by LJ. And this is where things get interesting, right? That midfield pressure, that containment if you're SSG. How do they keep Furia on the back foot? Yan, who has made another car change, but... His new Fennec, I believe it is, isn't quite fast enough to get to that ball, so SSG come forwards, lost. Is it towards Arsenal, this could get worse. Yan with the save from the side. LG up against Yan. They're desperate fury to get these couple of touches in a row, but Space Station are closing them so well in the middle that Fury are never able to really get control of the ball. And remember how the playstyle changed for SSG at the end of that last game. They were stealing boosts. They were getting those corner grabs. Same situation here. Furia, upfield. Card had zero boost. And he was waiting for a pass. Like, you don't have a lot in the tank here if you're Furia. And you're hoping that you're getting physical and maybe creating more opportunities. A follow-up shot oh, easily oh. saved. But even with the pressure now, you got to make sure you're fighting for that resource. Otherwise, it's going to be all but pointless. Loss is going to keep this one going. Furia have managed to steady the ship, uh, ship at least somewhat since going behind. And that's that one bounce. Arsenal up against Yan. Yan does get a clean touch this time. So Fury, I would say, are starting to increase their pace. Space Station needs to be able to deal with that. They'll know fully well that one goal can completely change a game. And in this case, change a series too. As Arsenal closes down Lost. Daniel sends it long. Yan is just waiting yet again. And we seem to have reverted to a period that we had maybe three games ago where Fury are making all the plays. The Space Station are more than happy to just sit back and defend for minutes at a time. You know, there are a lot of games that seem to go by very quickly. We saw it in the game one, maybe looking back at Coliseum up until the end. That's a long clear. Hold on. Uh, this very much feels like a tug of war match at midfield. We've had about two minutes burned. Still got a lot on the clock to work with. But if you're SSG, you would love a 2-0 lead. You're not comfortable with a 1-0 for Furia. You're just hoping you can break out of this bottleneck right now. It has been relenting, relenting, overwhelming. A lot of words, very little time. LJ almost makes it 2-0, but Furia have to find a way to break out. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this one ends 1-0. I can see Space Station just frustrating Furia for the next couple of minutes. Furia going to have to put everything on the accelerator. Arsenal from side to side. Look how deep Furia are. They have to get further forward. Don't let Space Station Gaming come out, because this is what happens. It can be Ooh. punished. Yan misses. Card is there up against Arsenal. Who's got the first clean touch here? It's Daniel. He sends it long. Arsenal's there for the redirect, but Yan beats him to it. Now Yan keeps on going. Loss is taken out of the way by LJ. And then Yan tries to take LJ out. Not quite happening again. And the time is going down, Space Man. Fury are going to have to start taking some real risks to get past Space Station. I mean, Fury are upfield consistently now, but Cole, what are you seeing? What, what, are, what are they not able to capitalize on? Because it seems that they've had more than their fair share of opportunities to potentially tie this game up. What are they not doing that needs to change? 
They go for bumps, and a couple of times they've missed the space station player that they're actually going for. He's managed to escape them and then get the ball as well. So I don't mind Furia going for that, trying to disrupt the space, sta uh, space station gaming yeah. uh, way of playing, but it's just not quite happening there again. Daniel escapes both with the ball and with his life. Blood comes forward, but it's only as far as Daniel. Look, loss goes from again, but the bump isn't well timed. Daniel escapes with it. Arsenal is so far out on some of his counterattacks, transitioning back to the defensive side of the field. And that means he has confidence in LJ and Daniel to do their best to keep this one out. No way, LJ just resets it cleanly over the last man back. It can't be that easy for SSG. I mean, he beats it on the sidewall and that's it. That's the reset right over again. He makes it look so simple as well, LJ. It was almost in slow motion. He had no pace at all on the ball. That was all style, that was all mechanics, and that was all surprise that Yan couldn't deal with. And now Space Station Gaming, a team who themselves are trying to break through to make it to the San Diego Major. Every point for them matters. Every victory is so key. They've got 44 seconds left to hold against the Furia that have been reluctant to lose you know they've carried on fighting throughout but space station may well have beaten them here lj over double oh man that could seal it and that does seal it lj is gaming he is gaming look at him go thanks for playing appreciate the game five i'll see you on youtube he's been brilliant lj you know he had, he had he had a game and a half that were quite quiet but at the start of this series and at the end of the series the bits that really matter lj has truly stepped up for ssg uh, he really has. And look, you could, you could level some criticism against him in games two and three. Right? Maybe he wasn't as productive offensively for sure. But when you look at the totality of this series, there were mistakes that were remedied by Furia. But really, the question was, if you take away their 50 game on offense, if you take away their ability to constantly win in the chip shots, what do they have? They really haven't had much. There hasn't been a lot of creativity. They haven't been able to force space. SSG were forcing so much opportunity in game four. They capitalize in game five. Daniel starts everything. LJ closes. This was a very, very strong performance and a rebound for SSG. GG's all around. A good showing from Furia, but just not enough. Space Station win this one in five. You have to credit Space Station for sticking to the game plan. I mean, Furia, they were what? 45 seconds a minute, whatever it was, away from winning that series on Utopia. They had it in their hands. The Space Station sensed that if they kept going, they would just get that win. And speaking of getting that win, Leaf, I think every win has been Correct. got. Every win has been got. We have uh, all of our matches finished off. Dignitas take that dub over Koi three to one. And the one that I think everyone was kind of waiting to see what would happen with was Optic. Three one over phase. No way. They get the dub. I told y'all. Uh, I told y'all. <laughs> you call me a madman. I said Optic's back, baby. Oh, yeah. It's phase is phasing. This is great. I, uh, I, I was watching because uh, uh, JG7 is doing the phase broadcast. Yeah. And uh, I was watching. He said, you know what? Through clenched teeth, there's there's nothing I can say. It was a it was a great game. Yeah, and then he spent the next minute convincing himself that that win was great oh, for Optic. optic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, optic. It, it was it was respect from him to Optic that hey, he's like finally it's good to to see it going. So yeah, these rounds honestly uh, a bit interesting, but we have more. We have we have a lot more Rocket League coming your way. And if you're a Complexity and NRG fan, you're gonna be hanging out with us because that's when we got on the mainstream coming up after the break. So we'll see you there.